My loves, it's Kayla Rose, and I'm back with another video today. To those of you who don't know me, welcome. This is a faith-based prophetic channel. To those of you who are returning, welcome back. Well, today's verse says, we're kind of going to be jumping to a lot of topics and areas. So just stay with me. It's all going to come together. Today's main lesson, though, is to lead with love and so today i just want to first start off in first corinthians 15 verse 58 which says be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing your labor is not in vain for the lord and so i kind of want to talk about this concept that when you're not leading in love, you tend to lose hope in God. And so the issue that the Corinthians were having around this time in the earlier verses, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17, the people had believed in God for hope, but they were no longer believing in others being resurrected. like. I believe that God rose from the dead, so I rise up. And when you're not leading with love, you begin to believe that your prayers aren't going to be answered and the people around you aren't going to be saved. You just begin to lose hope for everything God could really do in the lives of others and for yourself. And so when I say lead with love, Paul in 1 Corinthians, again in verse 16, I mean chapter 16, verse 4, he speaks of, let all, whatever you do, let it be done with love. And check out my podcast for the full length. But a little bit about me is that I lost hope. And I didn't even realize it. I was completely unaware. It was like unknown to me why I was so fearful, why I was so stressed. And I go into deeper detail on my podcast, but basically it's because of I had a hormone imbalance and I was not leaning into the Lord for my health. So I want someone to know that I'm transitioning back to a regular based diet because I was having gut issues, digestion issues, iron deficiencies, and I couldn't understand that it was the fact I, I took matters into my own hands in regards to my health. And so as a result of that, I kept reflecting on how I started ministry and how I was feeling about it now. Sometimes when we start something, you start a job, you start a program, you are so all into it, you're so passionate, you're showing up and you're excited. And then you gotta take into account when you, now it feels like an obligation. Now it's no longer fun. Now it feels dreadful. Now you feel anxious and fearful. I couldn't figure out why I was feeling so fearful and anxious towards just about everything. And it was all because my hormones were out of balance from lack of protein and all these deficiencies going on that I don't have a clue. That only probably lab results would be able to really tell me. I was just feeling high levels of stress and procrastination which is not my normal and another moral of this story is that this was over a period of months of not leaning on god which brings me to the next verse that captured my heart a week ago which was um in song of solomon's verse one i mean chapter one verse six the shilamite woman was like I have been taking care of the vineyard, but not my own vineyard. 
So this message today is really concerning the body, your health, you. You put on for everybody else. You show up for everybody else. You sacrifice. You will put your health on the line, not taking into account what you need, not taking into account your rest just to show up for others. And that's not what God has called us to do. When he says love our neighbor as ourselves, that doesn't mean we don't love ourselves at all. All we do is show that love to the neighbor while we deplete emotionally, while you can't even get out of bed. That w- that happened to me like a week ago. And that was my wake up call again from God. Like you didn't learn your lesson with boundaries with working as far as cutting off a time and having a bedtime schedule and a wake-up schedule and routines you didn't learn your lesson to do that you just let anything go and anything flow and what happens as a result is that as you're burnt out and now when God wants you to start something new or it's time for you to still work or pick up the pace now you're completely burnt out because you didn't set boundaries when the rest or you just didn't rest when God told you to rest. And so that's an issue I deal with is that constant running on a hamster wheel, trying to not be there for me. And that's not taking care of your vineyard. How can I show up if I'm not able to move? And that's the same for you. How can you continuously show up for others when you're burnt out? You don't have no love to give. You're just giving people whatever, whatever you could dish out. And it's not the same as when you have that passion, that vibrancy that delight and the Lord likes a cheerful giver. It's no longer fun when you dread to do something, when you dread getting up, when you dread going to work. That's when you should know you need to do an inventory of something's not right here. So today, I just really want someone to know that In my transitioning, I felt completely shattered that I had misled and even had spoken up upon giving people these resources of veganism while it's not sustaining me. I'm having restrictive cycles and that's why I'm binging But that also stems from family, like growing up, my growing up, my upbringing as well. But, you know, turning to these diets didn't help the mindset. The mindset that shifted everything for me right now is when I just watched someone else's testimony that they just didn't claim the disorder. And they also just believe that God could heal them from it and that just be it and that you could command your body and say with scripture God has not given me the spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind and self-control so I have authority over this I don't have to resent my life I don't have to resent my eating I don't have to resent how other people could eat what they want When in fact, I just learned, I ended up learning so much about meat that the way to eat healthy meat is the grass-fed and organic. That's how you get rid of worrying about the hormones and prebiotics. Because yeah, they do have meat like that, but I don't have to choose that option. I never inquired of God about my options. I just jumped to my own conclusions, which I don't regret because it expanded my taste buds and my palate, but it did cause me to deplete further in my health and 
in my mental health, emotional health, in my relationship with God and others as well. So I just want someone to know that today's one of those days where you have to lean on the Lord for your next season to be able to be immovable, to be able to be steadfast in this faith to be strong, to be brave, what God is going to be requiring of you right now, you're going to have to lean on him for your health because he cares about your health. He wants you to be the best version of yourself. He doesn't want you burning out for others. That's a part of people pleasing. That's a part of catering to society and not what the pace that God has set for you or the pace that you can set for yourself because only you know how much you can take on. And another thing is to decommit from what God has not called you to be committing to. Let him show you how your day should go. Let him lead the day is what I'm learning because it helps. It takes the pressure off. It takes the load off when I just say, Lord, have your way in my day and let me be present in the moment as to what you want me to do, speak about, or my task, my agenda. When I try to create my own schedule and do it all on my own, that's where anxiety, stress, and procrastination comes in because I feel the weight of all the responsibilities when God can just guide you moment by moment, step by step, and you feel the peace and ease of the Lord. So I love you guys so much. And I just want you guys to know that we only can show up and love others as much as we pour that into ourselves. And the quote I want to read to you is that love begins at home. It is not how much we do, but how much love we put into that action. So if I'm not leading with love and talking to people and showing up, it's because I'm not leading with that with myself. I'm over here not feeding myself, only having a drink for breakfast, becoming skin and bones and thinking I'm doing something and thinking that's what God wanted for me. No, God wants me to be free to eat whatever I want. God wants me to be able to have ice cream and not binge on it. And I reflected that the reason I began binging is because I was restricting. Because I reflected on my past eating habits. Yes, I ran the food for comfort that I needed deliverance from. But it was only when I became vegan did I start binging on things I never really cared to eat. I was never a big sweets person. I never would fall into these cycles. So I just want someone to know that we do not go through anything in vain we do not speak on anything in vain it is still all used for god's glory to show that he can still make whatever you lose hope in and turn it around and turn it into a blessing because now i feel free to have whatever I want to have. And that's what true freedom is. God says who the son says free is freed in, indeed. And also where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So if I'm not having liberty and I'm resentful at my plate, then I'm resenting myself. I'm resenting God for forcing me to be like this. And I'm resenting others because they could do whatever. And the whole time, it was because I was still stuck not being present with my food and sitting down with my nervous system and cultivating a healthy eating habit. I was used to eating on the go, which caused me 
to eat so fast, which caused me to eat too much because I was disrupting a flow of a rhythm of being present with myself. And once I began to take it serious to sit down, no distractions and just eat my food, I seen a miracle in myself from God that I don't struggle that same struggle anymore. And I don't feel like it'll ever come back. So I love you guys. And I want you guys to know that we should never take something we struggle with and just believe that God wants us to suffer from it. He can take it away in an instant. But when you're focused on doing it yourself, you don't even think that God would do that for you. Nothing is too small.